for those fighters, if it's not their rookie cards that I'm trying to pick up or their first autographs, it will be. What is going on, UFC card lovers? Welcome back here to another weekly episode of UFC Card Talk. My name is Damien, and if you're new to the channel, here at UFC Card Talk, we like to talk about everything to do with UFC cards, from collecting to investing, and also recent UFC card hobby news. This week's episode is it's going to be a QA. and a I had one of my friends in the hobby, shout out to Matty Mac, he actually is the guy who designed my new logo for the channel and also the YouTube banner. I was really appreciative that he went to the effort to do those without asking. So thank you again for those, I think they look absolutely awesome. And we talk regularly on Instagram, I always encourage my viewers to contact me on Instagram just because, as I've mentioned before in previous episodes, this journey for me outside of social media is a very lonely collecting journey so i always appreciate it when people get in contact with me through my dms on instagram through the comments on youtube but he basically was curious and he wanted to ask me a lot of different questions that he sent through and i thought what better way a lot of these questions i thought was super interesting and i thought what better way than to answer these questions for him and also for you other viewers on my YouTube channel. So that is what we are gonna be doing this week on today's episode. If you are new to the channel, if you are not yet subscribed, if you enjoy UFC card content, then I would recommend that you subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video at the end, please leave a thumbs up. I would like to say before I answer any of these questions that I, by no means an expert. I would not like anyone to take my word for fact. This is all, all my answers I'm gonna be giving today on these questions are basically, they're just my opinion. So you can take that with, you guys can take that as you will, but I just would like to say I'm not by any means no more or no better than any other one else out there. These are all just my own opinions. So I don't. I would not like anyone to be taking them as facts and to be influenced by just my own opinion because that's all it is for these questions. I'm gonna get through as many of these questions as I can, so let's get straight to it. He wanted to know my thoughts on collecting slash investing on the UFC Hall of Famers, guys like Chuck Liddell, Hoist Gracie, or Ronda Rousey. Comparing them against the modern day champions, people like Alexander Volkanovsky, Israel Adesanya, Amanda Nunes, etc. Very good question. I honestly think that, I think the USA card hobby in the future, they will determine who is the so-called Mickey Mantle of the UFC card hobby, who is the Hank Aaron of the UFC card hobby. There will be these legends from the past that not so much that people had maybe watched during their prime but had more researched about learnt about in the future and then have decided that you know what this guy was a forefather of the sport he was the one of the first ever legends one of the best to ever do it and they will be and there will be a time come when the ufc card hobby will have one of or if not a few of these legends determined as um the Mickey Mantles of the hobby. So who that will be, as I said, I do not know. I would like to prefer. I would. I would like to. Th- I would probably, if I had, to, if I was had a gun pointed to my head right now, I would probably have to say, I think someone like Hoist Gracie. He would be the front runner in my opinion, just because of the legacy of the Gracie, the family, the family name in the Jiu Jitsu world, which is a sport that is continuing to grow outside of MMA on its own. Also, the fact that he was the first to ever win a UFC event, I think that in itself holds a lot of merit. He also he also has a well-respected name, um, and he's very likable. So all those factors, I think, lead into someone who would be considered to be the Mickey Mantle of the UFC in the future. But how someone like a legend like that would be compared to a UFC, a UFC champion now is... It's still to be. It's another thing that was still yet to be determined. The thing that has the advantage for the UFC champions now is the sport is not only continuing to grow rapidly worldwide, but it also has just x x amount more viewers than what it did even ten years ago, twenty years ago. We're in the thirtieth year anniversary of the UFC now. 
so there's just so many more eyeballs and that creates more demand for the champions that we have now than what we've seen in the past another question so he wants to know do i think these panini debut products panini prism panini select from 2021 how will these products hold value against the older tops products in the future will they be worth more than these older tops products in the future another very interesting question i think a big big component right now is which is something else i've mentioned on this topic before is that a lot of the people including myself only came into the ufc hobby 2021 2022 even new people coming in now 2023 and what is now is the panini products so that makes them relevant that will add nostalgia for people in the future whether it's 10 15 years time Panini products for a lot of people are going to be, they're going to be desired for, for a long, long time. How much more they're gonna be desired than tops is of course another thing that is still yet to be seen. I would argue against the same thing that helps Panini products now for nostalgia is that the Panini is now, is about Panini being the, the product of now is that in three, four, five years time, however long it is before Fanatics and tops under the tops banner are making UFC card products, which I have shown on a previous video before. Michael Rubin, the CEO of Fanatics, has stated himself they will hold the license for UFC products. I'm not sure what year that is, but I can guarantee you that Fanatics will be making cards. Whether that's under the tops banner, I can only assume at this moment it will be. So when tops are making UFC cards again in the future, that is going to shine a light back on the older tops products because and it will make panini products less relevant because as i said with any card product what is now is what is relevant so we've even seen it with the recent ufc select people going crazy for ufc select as well maybe more so than what they have gone with ufc 2023 prism but don't forget there was select the year before and there was select 2021 as well those products get a little bit more forgotten about each year when the new product comes out obviously there will be a time where they will be nostalgic the debut years for any product whether it's debut tops debut panini prism debut select even debut chronicles i always think they will hold good long-term value but that is just my opinion how they will compare against i would argue that in my own mind i think in the future i think it will be hard to beat tops 2009 as the debut year of UFC card products. I think that will be tough to beat. That will be very sought after. Um, but after that, I would think that if it's not Panini Prism or even Panini Select, first year Panini Select, it would be something like Topps Chrome, uh, debut year of Topps Chrome 2017. Those four products, I think, will be holding the long-term value from here on out. He also wants to know, do I keep a catalog of my PC cards? I literally keep a catalog of my PC cards right here over my shoulder. Almost all, I display 90% of my PC cards. If they're not displayed on a shelf, then it typically means that I do not want them. So they sit in a drawer and they are what I would classify as my selling inventory. There are a couple of cards that I am a little bit more protective of just from a sunlight perspective. I do have a window here in this room. It does not technically shine on any of this back wall here, but I am obviously aware that sunlight can long-term damage cards. So I do have a 2018 Topps Chrome base rookie for Sean O'Malley that is signed with silver ink. I do not keep that card out on display just because I do not want that autograph to deteriorate over time. So that is a card that I will keep away in a drawer and just look at every now and then. But yes, the best way that I keep the inventory of my PC cards is actually displaying them and enjoying my cards that way. He also wants to know, do I have or am I looking for any specific long-term holds, say 10, 15 years? Absolutely, I do have um, long-term holds. I th honestly think they are the funnest cards to sort of go after. Obviously, this is all just speculation. No one can tell the future. It's hard to know what's going to happen between now and 10, 15 years. But I do really believe that UFC, as a growing sport, as a growing card community, 
I think there will be room for some cards, not all cards, some cards to really have a good multiplying effect in value over the next 10 to 15 years. You can see over my shoulder here, I do have some sealed boxes. They are things that I am hanging on to. They are some of my long-term holds. Um, I do have a box of 2021 Hobby Select. I do have some retail boxes of Debut Prism. 2021. I also do have a sealed hobby box there for 2010 tops series 4 main event. These are all products that I will in time look to turn around for a profit from when I bought them. Will that work out? I do not know. We'll have to find that out. And then back to more individual cards. As I said, I do tend to have a list of four or five fighters who I think will hold relevance in 10 to 15 years time. And for those fighters, if it's not their rookie cards that I'm trying to pick up or their first autographs, it will be those debut products. So whether it's 2009 Tops, if they had a product in that, if they had a product in debut Tops Chrome 2017, and then obviously onto the debut Panini products from 2001 onwards. Which leads into a question, do I think sealed boxes are a good investment? I do think some sealed boxes could be a good investment. And as I said, it would come back to the same rules that I use to apply for individual cards, um, debut years of popular products, whether it's Topps Chrome, Panini Prism, Panini Select, or even some Heritage Topps products. I, I do think, even though I am holding two retail boxes of Prism, I do think if you are gonna hold sealed products, they do need to be hobby boxes. And what my understanding is of what increases sealed box value long term is obviously the cards that one could contain in that. So to be to give a very good example, 2021 Prism. It was the debut year for UFC. It is a very Panini Prism, very popular, very well known product. Even though, as I said, it is the product of now, so that does increase its popularity, but also. So that in itself creates value, but then you look into the fighters who are in the rookie class of that product. Perfect example, Hamzat Chemaev. If Hamzat Chemaev wins a belt at middleweight, if he wins a belt at welterweight, if he makes weight again, if he wins a belt at light heavyweight in the future, five, 10 years time, if he has an absolutely outstanding career that he could potentially have, that is gonna, call, that is gonna create more demand for these 2021 products. So that will increase the value of any sealed product from 2021. Blasters and retail products, probably not so much. It's gonna be the hobby boxes where people could potentially pull a Hamzat Chemai of Gold Prism or pull another low numbered par Prism parallel from that box. That is what is gonna create demand for sealed product in the future and you could obviously create your own examples for other sealed products as well using those same rules and that leads into his next question what do i think the ufc card hobby looks like in 10 to 15 years i'm generally on the positive side for ufc cards i honestly think that ufc i'm I've mentioned it before in a previous answer but i think the ufc as a sport it's continuing to grow internationally cards Sports cards in themselves, although they dip in value, um, I do believe that the demand for sports cards and specifically UFC cards in the future is only going to grow as much as the sport grows. So I do think over the next 10 to 15 years, we're going to see a massive increase of people coming into the UFC card hobby, whether they are coming in to the UFC card hobby alone or whether they are coming over from other sports, the more that the popularity grows for UFC cards, um, it's gonna draw attention from other collectors or other investors from other sports. So I would honestly think that within 10 to 15 years, I would be, not, I would be absolutely shocked if the UFC card community hasn't three, five x in that time. And I do think it could, it could be even more than that, to be honest. Um, I think that UFC cards have a lot of room for growth just based not only based off the sport and I think the more that we have these UFC champions people like Israel Adesanya people like Alexander Volkanovsky even even your Conor McGregor's hitting the Hollywood scene I think that is only going to draw more attention to UFC as a sport as I said which will then bring in more collectors 
So in summary, definitely think there's a lot, a lot of growth for the UFC card hobby. 10 to 15 years, I would expect it to be at least five times bigger now, the card community, than what it is now. Therefore, increasing the value of UFC cards. And he wants to know, also, besides my card collecting, what is my goals for this channel, for UFC Card Talk in the future? And what do I want to be my main focus for the channel? That is also a really great question. Something that I don't really give that much thought about, to be completely honest. I myself, I mentioned this in my talk with Zach from Box Alarm Trading, but I can just sit here and babble on about cards that I'm so passionate about that, um, as I said, is really a motivator for me to make content around just because when I found the cards, which wasn't that long ago, 18, 18 months ago, I really wanted to learn as much as I could about them. And at that time, um, there wasn't a lot of content, which so it sort of inspired me to make the content that I, as a person who is passionate about these cards, would like to hear. My number one goal is just to be consistent. Sometimes, as you other content creators know, which I would like to highlight some of these guys, I mean, I would be absolutely surprised if you're not already. But obviously, as I said, Zach and Eric at Box Alarm Trading. You've got Matt at the Golden Octagon. You've got Joe at Joe's Card Stash. You have Cloudsy at Cloudsy420. He is super entertaining. All these guys bringing a different element to the UFC card hobby in making content. You also have Chad, Chad's cut. But for now, it's just really to be consistent. And then building on consistency, I wanna build on the quality of my videos. And other than that, as I said, I'm just super passionate about these cards. They're really easy for me to create content around just because, as I said, I, I, I live every day. I'm always checking um, whether it's my Instagram, whether it's eBay, other selling platforms. Um, I'm really passionate about the UFC as a sport. It's it is my hobby. Um, being a fan of this sport is my hobby. So and then as I said, being a fan of these cards, um, being passionate about the cards is also a hobby. So my goals for the channel, but it's it's nice to set goals, but also too I know that it can be hard for people to get caught up with numbers on on YouTube, whether it's subscribers, whether it's likes, whether it's comments. Um, I know that all just comes with time. As I said, if I concentrate on consistency and just try and increase the quality where I can, we all live busy day-to-day -to -day -to -day lives. No one is doing this full-time. Um, whether I would like to do this full-time or not, I really don't think so. Not to, make, not to say that I don't want to continue to grow my channel um, and what happens, happens in the future. But for me at the moment, it's just a hobby that I'm passionate about and my goals are still the same. Just be consistent, increase the quality as it, as it goes and th whatever happens with that will, will happen. And I know that's a bit of a boring answer, but unfortunately that's, that's the best way I can answer it. He wants to know, have I attended a card show? I have not ever attended a card show. And shout out to the people who are going to the national. Um, if you've been earlier in the week, this video obviously comes out on a Friday as per usual, but if you go into the National this weekend, I'm very, very jealous. Um, I've never been to a card show, just never had any access to a card show. I'm hoping it's something I can change in the very near future. I was actually considering originally going to the National this year, but just through timing with things outside of, outside of hobby life, um, it didn't work out. But no, I have not been. There is a decent size uh, card show in Germany that I think is towards the end of the year. They had their first ever event last year. That may be something that I can get to this year. And obviously if I could, it would be something that I would love to share with you guys. So would love to do like a vlog style video, just showing out the card show, seeing how well UFC is represented there as a sport. That would be something that could potentially be coming this year. And if I could, that would be an absolute dream, but we'll see. But yeah, definitely would love to get to a card show and I will get to a card show in the future as soon as I can, basically. We'll get down to two last questions now. He also wants to know, from the rookies over the last three years, who do I think will have the most UFC success long-term? So people like uh, Yuri Prohashka from 2021, maybe Hamzat Jemai of 2021 as well. We've got obviously 
Patty from last year. We've got Ilya Taporia from last year. So I would, to answer that question, it's obviously really tough. Um, a lot of these fighters at the top level of the sport, which if, if you're in the UFC, um, you're at the top level of mixed martial arts. It's sort of crazy if you even think that there is so many hundreds, thousands of fighters who aren't even in the UFC. They So you don't even know about them yet. So to be in the UFC, to be signed by the UFC, to be in the top 15 of the UFC, you are literally in the top percentage of the world in mixed martial arts, which is kind of crazy and obviously much respect to everyone who even um, competes in mixed martial arts. If I was to pick three fighters, let's pick four fighters. I honestly think if you, 2018 wasn't that long ago. That was the first rookie year in the museum products for Israel Adesanya. I honestly think out of all the fighters, Israel Adesanya has the highest ceiling. If you want to come uh, closer to that, we'll jump up to 2021. Hamzat Chemayev looks really good, I must admit. Um, there's a lot of hype around him, a lot of buzz. He is very popular already without even sort of sniffing a title, without even competing for a title. Obviously, it will be coming in the future. I think Hamzat Chemayev could be that guy, um, and all it would take for him is to win the belt. If you want to go to 2022, I do really think that Tom Aspinall... He just had that impressive win in the heavyweight division over the weekend. He, for a big, big man, he has a lot of a lot of athletic ability. His speed, his movement. He's getting better on the feet every fight, and he also he's he's a, he's known as a ground fighter. His jiu-jitsu is absolutely insane as well. So I think he, I think Tom Aspinall, and then obviously Ilya Taporia is another guy who just looks absolutely insane at the moment. The way that he just made a mess of Josh Emmett was absolutely crazy and Josh Emmett is no slouch. So those two guys from 2022 products I think um, definitely could have big big buzz. Let's chuck in a fighter from 2023 product. Jack Della Molina, my fellow Aussie, he got a hard time for that last fight but I think people forget he had to make weight twice. He traveled internationally twice his opponent changed on him three times before that fight, and it was a bad it was a, a bad matchup for him to be honest. And he still come out of that fight, and that guy, his opponent was just a, was just an absolute animal as well. So I think Jack Della Molina, he has shown a lot, a lot of skills, a lot of capability. Um, I do think he could be in the future one of the best prospects, one of the best rookies from this product. We also have someone like Bo Nickel who has looked absolutely indestructible right now. He's, he's wrestling. So, yeah, what, what's that? Five, six guys? Those those five, six fighters, that's going to be my pick for who could be the future of the UFC. And then last question. Do I think fighters like Anderson Silva, John Jones, Nick Diaz, Khabib, for example, he wants to know were these fighters like this were their careers or legacies hurt by outside of cage incidences or negativity outside the cage? Um, I would definitely argue that John Jones absolutely has had his legacy hurt, at least in my own opinion. And I know I'm probably not the only one. I know there's probably a lot of people who do probably would defend John Jones. I know Joe Rogan is one of those guys. John Jones, just his ability, his fight ability is just insane. And obviously it's, He's getting towards the tail end of his career now, but I would argue that for someone to be collectible or for their legacies to have a, a positive light shone on them, they cannot have um, the incidences that John Jones has had outside the cage. No one likes, no one likes a bad guy, unfortunately. For people to have passion, for them to um, have their cards collectible, people need to have a positive light to shine on them. And when you have incidences like John Jones has had, it's 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 not a good look. Nick Diaz, I would argue, he obviously has had some outside cage stuff, but I feel like his support and followers, they sort of respect him more probably for that. I think, um, will Nick Diaz be someone re be remembered by the UFC card community in 10 to 15 years time? Maybe, 
yeah, I think the people who like Nick Diaz, they like him already. So whether, I mean, Nick Diaz was never a champion. He was a well-respected fighter just for the way that he fought. But yeah, I don't think that's going to equate to him having incredible card prices in the future. Whether it hurt his, the offside, the outside stuff of the cage, as I said, I don't think that hurt his career at all. I think it made him more likable to his own fans. Um, but obviously, time away from the cage is not going to increase your fans. Khabib, he retired early, you could say. That's the only thing you could say about Khabib is he retired early. I mean, if that's the only thing, bad thing you could say about someone, then they're doing pretty good. Um, he was smart enough to know that every good fighter eventually loses anyway. He didn't want that to happen. He walked away from the sport um, with the respect of his former coach, his father as well. So, yeah, you, you can't hate on a guy like that. Um, and I think that actually helps his legacy, what Khabib did with retiring early, to be honest. So there we have it, guys. That is this week's episode. Thank you again for watching. Thank you again for Matty Mack for the questions. And I'll see you again here next week at UFC Card Talk. Huh. Okay.